So this is the Astra JVXR Garrett G-Series Turbo Manifold Kit. So we've got all the components laid out for this manifold kit. Um, let's probably start with the manifold adapter. This is a bolt-on adapter for the stock cast manifold. Now, the difference, one of the main differences between the Astra JVXR and the Astra HVXR in the turbo department is that the Astra H has the turbine housing built into the manifold. So it's not possible to remove the turbo or turbine housing and leave the manifold in place like it is on the Astra JVXR. The Astra JVXR has its own cast manifold that the turbo bolts onto. Similar to how aftermarket turbos work, the flange is the sticking point. The flange is what's different. So that's what we've got here. We've got an adapter to take us from that four bolt flange to the um, Garrett G-Series V-band flange. So it's just a case of you remove the standard turbo and turbine housing and this will just bolt on in place. So we've got um, CNC machine flanges um, and then a full stainless steel manifold adapter construction. There's a takeoff for the 45 millimeter turbo smart external wastegate. So the stock turbo setup, we're using internal wastegate and it's a twin scroll turbo. So this is a single scroll or open scroll turbo with uh, an external wastegate. So that's what some of the extra components in this kit are for. It's just a much more reliable way and a much more controllable way at higher power of uh, controlling the boost pressure. So that's the main reason you would want to go to an external wastegate. It also allows you to package it a little bit more differently. So once you attach this to the um, OE turbo manifold, it's then just a case of V-band join to the Garrett G25 turbine housing or G30 turbine housing. Again, the beauty of a V-band flange is that there's no gaskets. Um, it offers like adjustability so we can rotate this and like I said there's just no gaskets we've got a male and female locating ring and once that's clamped up and adjusted in the correct position you know the bolts don't rattle loose um, you know there's no gaskets to blow it's much more serviceable in that you can remove it at a later date and refit it without any need for yeah messing around with any gaskets or anything like that so we've already done a video on the uh, Garrett G series turbos We'll put a link to that in the description. And we've also covered the TurboSmart 45 millimeter Hypergate external wastegate. So again, we'll put another link for that in the description. We don't need to go over those again. Uh, we use those in all of our turbo kits now. The G series range seems to be, you know, it's the most modern kind of most advanced turbo at the minute. So they're the ones we're trying to use as much as possible in all of our kits. So once we've, um, kind of got that manifold bolted on, we've got the turbo bolted on. The next thing really is the downpipe. So again, we've got fully TIG welded, fully stainless steel, obviously that with all of our parts. Have to mention it because, you know, there are ones on the market that aren't fully stainless steel. Um, but yeah, as with all of our parts, these are uh, full stainless steel. Um, fully TIG welded, nice brush finish. Obviously we're trying to build something that looks nice, but function is obviously more important. So this is three and a half inch bore. Realistically, three and a half inch bore is overcooking it on a G25 550. You're looking at four, 450 horsepower. You don't really need all that bore size, but there's no real disadvantage to having it either. Um, you can only benefit from having a larger bore downpipe. There's no disadvantage. So again, it's an obvious thing to do. It really doesn't cost that much more to do that as part of a kit. So, you know, we're always gonna use the biggest bore that realistically is required. And it also helps when you do get up into those higher horsepower figures, like with a G3770, you know, you could be making over 600 horsepower at that point. So yeah, yeah there's gonna be some advantages to, uh, to a larger downpipe. We've got the wastegate tie in here so with an external wastegate 
you'll need somewhere for those gases to go when they bypass that turbine housing. The whole idea of an external wastegate is that when it opens up, gas can bypass the turbine housing to maintain the turbine speed so that we're not overspeeding the turbine, not making too much boost pressure or more boost pressure than we'd like. That wastegate opens up and we need to get those gases back out and into the exhaust system. A lot of the time you'll see people use a screamer pipe. Again, screamer pipes work, um, but we wanted to really try and build a, a very OE or OEM plus kind of solution. So the only real option is to tie it back into the downpipe. It just means absolutely no hassle at MOT time. Um, screamer pipes are nice, they're loud and they're fun, but they do tend to get, you know, um, a bit annoying as time goes by. You can't turn off a screamer pipe. So every time you put your foot on the throttle and that wastegate opens up, uh, you know, later on in the rev range, um, you'll get gas out of that screamer pipe. It makes the underneath of the car messy. Um, you know, it's illegal. So we try wherever possible with these kits to just talk people into a recirculated downpipe. But yeah, we've got a flex bellow in there. So the wastegates really do rattle when they're open. And that's usually where you'll see a failure in either the manifold or the downpipe. Because they rattle so much, they might say they vibrate and that's what cracks the weld joints or just fatigues the stainless steel over time. And uh, yeah, you'll then get a crack form. So it's really important to have this flexible joint in there. It just gives that wastegate somewhere to go and it also aids fitment. So it just makes it a little bit easier to fit when you've got a little bit of room to move things around. And then at the bottom of the downpipe, we've got the standard three bolt flange with the bracket on it to bolt it up onto the back of the engine. So this will suit any aftermarket secondary downpipe or secondary decat section or sports cat section. We've got those, we can put the link for that in the description, but it will also suit the stock secondary section if you need to put one back in for MOT. These cars, most of them will pass an MOT with that secondary um, with that secondary cat section in. So that was why it was really important that we retained the ability to just fit that secondary cat in, rather than trying to do a full three and a half inch downpipe. Again, we might have benefited in terms of performance marginally, but at MOT time when you wanna refit that cat, it becomes a nightmare then because you've not got OE style fitment. So yeah, that's, that's one of the main advantages of, of kind of keeping that three inch bore down at the bottom fully surfaced flange so it'll suit the OE gasket it'll clamp up nicely um, with obviously no leaks and uh, no gas blowing out the side so we talked about all of the exhaust components or the kind of hot parts of the kit so moving on to the intake side so the, the Garrett G25s and G30s and G35s all have a 76 millimeter three inch intake one thing that's really important when you know we've, we've gone to some lengths to not compromise on the exhaust side of things with a three and a half inch downpipe so again we really don't want to compromise on the intake side of things and that's why we've got this uh really tight twisty weird looking hose so what would be ideal would be a solid intake pipe you know from the turbo to the top but given that the clearances behind the back of the engine are really tight and it's really important to us that we maintain that three inch bore all the way up with a no more than a three inch centerline radius so um, it's getting a little bit complicated when i talk about centerline radiuses but it just means that there's absolutely no reduction in bore size throughout that bend say it's a kind of uh, like a twisted s bend and the whole idea behind that is that we're, 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 we're really trying to keep the airflow nice and smooth. We want the airflow to be really nice and smooth as it enters the turbo, as it's pulled in. We don't want any restrictions because those are the kinds of, you know, it, it's, it's, it all comes down to efficiency making power, really. The engine is just an air pump, so we want to make sure it can pump the right amount of air in and out as efficiently as possible. So we produced our own piece of tooling in-house and then 
JS Performance will make a hose on that tooling for us so that we can have a perfect fit and we don't have to worry about you know the hose rubbing on things or if we'd have made a, a solid pipe it would have been so difficult to actually fit it onto the car you more or less would have had to put the intake pipe in before actually bolting the manifold on so in terms of serviceability um, it would have been very hard to work on it flares out to 90 millimeters which is the size of the intake pipe that we've used some tuners will be happy with a 90 millimeter intake pipe um, it really depends on the mapping of these cars some will prefer a smaller one we can do it um, but really we'd recommend that you just stick to the 90 rather than having an 80 mil like the like the oe or the kind of upgrade ones uh, the kind of stage one to three upgrades and then we've got the 25 millimeter recirculation valve port in the top here so once we've got once we've made that boost pressure and we close the throttle off we need somewhere for that boost pressure to go so the boost pipe will allow that boost pressure to travel out of the recirculation valve back into the intake pipe and keep that compressor spinning it, again it all comes down to efficiency so dump valves are nice they make a cool noise but recirculation valves inevitably get you better performance they make for a car that drives a lot better you know all of the oe manufacturers use uh, recirculation valves Borg Warner turbos Borg Warner EFRs even come with a recirculation valve built in you know that's how you know the, the kind of turbo manufacturers view them as like a, an essential item really so yeah that's why we've got the ability to just bolt that 25 millimeter turbo smart research straight in the side there so at the top of that silicon hose we've got this aluminium intake pipe bracket on it that ties off onto the uh, brake fluid reservoir so that keeps it solid mounted and we've also got the boss in there to take the OE oval math sensor so you just remove that from your stock math or from your upgraded math if you've got one and it just bolts straight in there with the stainless steel machine screws uh, and then the 90 millimeter ram air pro ram filter just pops on the end so with an astra jvxr the boost pipe comes out the top of the engine bay which again is completely opposite the way to the way the Astra HVXR works, where the throttle body is in the top of the engine bay. So this is where you'll see the recirculation valve. So the turbo outlet will be here and it comes into this silicon reducer. And then we're up to 63 millimeters into this boost pipe. We've got the 25 millimeter takeoff on it for the recirculation valve, which will go that way around and then point off back into the intake. And then We'll shoot off down here to the intercooler now this boost pipe is a direct fit for an air tech intercooler they're pretty much the most popular ones for the astra j obviously you know um, european customers there are other options available for those guys but realistically we don't see those in the uk or if we do there's very few and far between so we can't kind of cater for everything but it's probably the easiest part of the kit to adapt to whatever kind of setup you've got really so in terms of if there's any part of the kit you're going to need to modify to suit something that's other than an air intercooler it's obviously going to be this part of the kit but realistically this is also going to be the easiest part of the kit to modify different size couplers different length couplers on the end Obviously, if you've got a rough idea, we can make this shorter or longer if needed. Um, but realistically, that's an easy enough piece to adapt if you don't have an AirTech intercooler. Then it just comes on to the um, oil and coolant lines. So the oil line's really simple. We just take the uh, banjo from the back of the block and we run it up and then onto the top of the turbo, which is really nice. Um, this, this is just stainless steel uh, line with a nylon black nylon overbraid PTFE hose so this is never going to rot away the PTFE hose is you know last a lifetime kind of stuff it's not like a rubber hose which will degrade with hot oil over time this uh, this will easily outlast the turbo kit and then just same again with the coolant lines black nylon overbraid 
Um, these are rubber lines. The beauty of the rubber lines is they are more flexible than the PTFE lines, and these do just carry coolant, so we don't really need to worry about the the kind of uh, the rubber degrading over time. This is more than suitable for uh, for warm coolant. It's basically OEM specs anyway, or better than. We do now also include a fire sleeve for all of these lines, so the oil feed and then the two coolant lines do include a uh, fireproof lining. Again, these come with all the banjos to fit directly onto all the OE points, and then the AN6 fittings to just drop straight onto the Garrett G-Series turbo. So all of this is fully reversible. There's no parts of this kit where you need to kind of cut coolant lines or modify anything. It's all literally just bolt on, bolt off stuff. There are a lot of other kind of bits and clips that we haven't showed here, mainly because, you know, there's not really point in uh, showing clips and clamps and things like that. But yeah, literally everything you need to install this is included in the kit. Chosen to go with Ram Air Pro Ram filters in the kit. Um, they pretty much all do the same thing. It just comes down to personal preference. Some people like the cotton filters, some people like the foam filters, so we can swap it out for a foam one if you'd prefer, but realistically they all do the same thing. Any questions, throw them down in the comments or drop us an email. All the links are in the bio, so thanks for watching.